Thank you okay, very much. thanks a lot uh, uh, to Conrad uh, and to you, uh, Tony, uh, for uh, having me talk on this uh, on this uh, setting. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, capsulotomy and capsular management and, and how I uh, preserve the uh, capsule working through interportal uh, capsulotomy. Uh, I work in uh, in Horsens uh, in Denmark and uh, I'm a consultant at the, the uh, regional hospital there and, and also working uh, with my 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 colleagues in the Horsens Research Center uh, for hip training and uh, preservation surgery. And as uh, Tony mentioned, I'm the uh, uh, chairman of the Danish hip atroscopy registry, which is now almost uh, 10 years uh, in, in, in working. These are my disclosures. So the, uh, the capsule has gained a lot of interest over the past uh, few years. Uh, when I started to, to uh, learn hip atroscopy almost 20 years ago, uh, you could make a hole and you, it would uh, close by itself, it was said. So we didn't pay much attention to it, but, but uh, now we would say it's really important. Uh, and especially in the young patients and in the, uh, females where they tend to have or show greater joint uh, hyperlaxity and also in patients with uh, generalized or localized uh, hyperlaxity. And of course, in patients with the borderline dysplasia. Uh, also, when you do the uh, distraction on the table and the, the hip comes right out with uh, not too much effort, uh, you should uh, pay close uh, attention to the capsule. And uh, of course, if you do a large uh, capsulotomy, uh, a T-cut uh, uh, capsulotomy, you should uh, close it. So uh, this is a, a rare occurrence, but it's been described in liter literature, uh, iatrogenic uh, um, dislocations. I have a Swedish colleague that uh, performed uh, a procedure on a, um, uh, 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 an athlete and when he went to see her, when she went back to uh, field and track, she dislocated her hip in the stadium when he was uh, attending. So it, it, it can happen. So uh, I think in, 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 in our daily life, micro instability is uh, probably much more common than uh, more gross uh, instability. So uh, that, that's something you have to be uh, aware of. Just to look a little bit on the uh, anatomy, uh, the iliofemoral ligament, ligament is uh, a, a front part of the uh, capsule and it's a very strong ligament and you are cutting right through it if you do a, a interportal uh, cut. Uh, to gain access to the joint. Uh, we already saw an, in the nice talk from uh, Professor El Sayat uh, on the portals, and I use uh, 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 the same portals. Uh, you have the anterior superior iliac spine to the left. This is the left hip. Uh, you have the greater trochanter, and I use the anterolateral portal as he did uh, for my first uh, access to the joint when, when we have traction. And then I use a modified anterior portal, what we call a mid anterior portal uh, for my uh, working portal. And uh, I'll just go straight on to uh, talk about my, uh, or how I shoot you the capsule. Uh, I do an interportal cut. I connect, um, uh, most often I connect both uh, portals in, inside the joint. And uh, in order to that, you have to make a capsulotomy about eight to 10 millimeters uh, away from the uh, labrum and away from the rim. Uh, I, I do my entry into the joint, I make two both portals, and then I do the capsulotomy at the beginning, and the, then I do my uh, diagnostic round after that. It's very important that you uh, do not excise too much tissue because you're uh, going to need some tissue in, in order to be able to repair the labrum at the end of the procedure. Uh, here you have an intraoperative view where you have the, uh, the head on top, you have the labrum on the left, and you have the capsule uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the right side, and you see the tip of the beaver blade. And, and the, uh, the incision goes along perpendicular to the labrum uh, in the capsule. So you have to stay a little bit, you, have, you don't want to get too close uh, to down on the rim. So only make a T cut if necessary. I know in some in some uh, countries they do a big uh, T cut capsulotomy. I think uh, here in Europe most people will uh, make a 
a small interportal or even uh, two small uh, holes. So this is uh, about the place where the capsulotomy is. Uh, you connect from about 12 to 3 o'clock position. Uh, and um, then I, uh, when I'm uh, almost finished with my uh, central compartment, I place the camera in the mid anterior portal. And then I place my first capsular suture in the uh, anterolateral capsule and secure it with a clamp. You see it here, and, uh, and I'll show it in the video uh, later on. And then I move the camera back to the anterolateral portal and release traction and flex the hip. And then I can finish the, uh, cent uh, the, uh, uh, the osteochondroplasty on the femoral neck. And at the end of the procedure, I can then place the second suture in uh, front in the anterior capsule. And then at, at the end, I remove the camera and uh, I close the uh, lateral capsule uh, on the suture that I placed first. And here's how it looks. It's an interportal capsular closure and I'm uh, using a number two bicycle. You have the camera in mid anterior portal. The hip is in full extension and in traction. And for this part, I use the, uh, the Acropass Direct Suture Parser. Uh, it's a looped uh, suture. I'm looking from uh, mid anterior down to anterolateral at down on 12 o'clock. Uh, you have the labrum on the left, and I already did the uh, label repair. I uh, introduced the suture parser with a half pipe, and then I grab the posterior part of the capsule, uh, release the, the suture, and then I use the, the uh, suture parser just to, uh, to pop it further into the joint. And then I grab the anterior part of the capsule, and sometimes it can be a little tricky to, uh, to grab this, uh, the suture. Uh, with the uh, suture parser, and sometimes you have to, to uh, pull back on the suture on the outside so that it comes uh, into uh, reaching uh, range. And then you just uh, pull it back out, and then you have a double looped uh, suture going outside, and you, when you pull on it outside, you can see that you have a good firm grip on the, uh, the capsule. And you can even use that when you do the, uh, the femoral neck uh, to pull, it, uh, uh, pull the capsule back. Then I secure it with a, with a clamp or a pair on the outside and just uh, leave it hanging uh, for the end of the procedure. Then I change the portals again. So the camera goes back into the uh, anterolateral portal. Uh, and here's the, uh, the cannula coming in. And then the camera moves around. You see the, uh, my label repair, one anchor there and one over there. And uh, you have a good uh, view around. And then I finish the, thir the surgery in both compartments. I, I'm putting uh, traction on the lateral suture just to help me. And then at the end of the procedure, when I've done the uh, femoral neck osteochondroplasty, I then introduce the, um, the acropass or the suture parser to the front of the hip. Also, again, with a number two uh, vicro uh, looped. And the hip is in uh, 45 degrees of flexion. And then we have the suture inside. You grab the anterior part of the capsule in the front at about three o'clock position or maybe two o'clock position. You pass the suture down onto the uh, uh, distal part of the uh, capsulotomy. You see my osteochondroplasty down below. You see the femoral head and neck junction. And then you grab a sufficient capsule uh, distally, and then you pass out the, the the looped suture, and then you can see when you pull on it that it closes nicely, and even you can even see a parts of the uh, the, uh, the psoas tendon in view uh, over there. And on the outside, it looks like this. Uh, you do a, a, a double loop. It's a, called a Quebec City Slider, uh, described by Dr. Mark Philippon in Vale. So we do uh, two loops, and then you take uh, one of the sutures uh, or the other suture ends and pass it uh, through the loop and just uh, advance the, uh, the sliding knot down onto the capsule and tighten it. And then you put uh, two to three uh, half hitches on top with the uh, knot pusher, like you see here. 
And uh, when you've done that and you've, it's uh, nice and secure, you cut it with a suture cutter. And then you remove the camera because you know that the, the, the first suture you placed is in a, in a good position. And then you repeat the procedure. You do a double loop uh, with the uh, Quebec City slider. You pass one suture through the, the double loop. And then you slide it in. And you, again, you see it's in a good, nice, tight uh, closure. And then you just put some half pitches on top of it. And that's the end of the uh, the capsule closure. Uh, I think it's a easy and a nice way to do it, um, and it's uh, reproducible. Uh, okay, uh, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of uh, uh, talk about the capsule in, in, over the recent years, and uh, we started a, a multi-center RCT a couple of years back, and it's described in this. Uh, a paper in the the uh, BMJ Open. Uh, you can look it up. There are some also there are also some other studies on capsular closure out there. And we will be finished with this one very shortly. Uh, we almost finished with the uh, inclusion of of patients. We we have uh, almost uh, the uh, the required uh, two hundred patients uh, now. So uh, thank you uh, for listening. <laughs>